Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I'll continue the series on the King's Gambit with the Muzio Gambit, which is perhaps one of the most ridiculous openings uh, ever in invented and it probably shouldn't be played, but it's really hard uh, to prove it uh, wrong and it's really hard for black to to use the fact that white is gambiting a whole piece or perhaps two. So let's continue with the king's gambit. In the last video we uh, got to the position with g5 which is black's uh, main defense to the ki uh, king's knight gambit with knight to f3 and g5 is a, is a normal move of course uh, and probably the best one along with the fisher defense d6. And white is always supposed to be slightly worse, and if black manages to hold on to his extra pawn or dampen white's attacking pressure, then black is always going to be winning. And in fact, engines give this position as better for black in almost every variation. However, uh, here, uh, to enter the Muzio Gambit, white doesn't continue with pawn to h4, which disrupts black's uh, plans to create a solid pawn chain on the king side. Uh, and h4 is the most logical move. Uh, here, white continues with bishop to c4, which... Uh, as a substitute move for h4 seems pretty risky. Uh, I mean, it's already risky, but it seems much riskier than usual because, okay, you do get an attacking piece staring at f7 and in conjunction with the knight on f3, which could either jump to g5 or to e5. This could be pretty scary, but you are allowing black uh, to gain a lot of control on the king side. And black's uh, main response here is pawn to g4, attacking the knight, and now the Muzio Gambit is to just let go of the knight and sacrifice it. You're not going to use it with the bishop in the attack. You're going to castle, bring your king to safety, and use use the f-file to attack. Now, after gf3, black accepts the gambit. There's basically nothing else to do. And queen takes f3. This is now the starting position of the Muzio gambit. And uh, probably one of the, uh, well, best positions in chess to, to study your tactical ability. And... Here, if you defend perfectly, you're going to win every time, that's clear, and the engines will always win this position. And humans, believe it or not, uh, lose it much more often uh, than, than they win with the black pieces, because the fact that you have an extra knight is pretty pointless in this position, where you can see that white has castled, so one point in development, the queen is on f3, two points, the pawn is on e4, three points, and the bishop is on c4, that's four points of development, black only has his very weak f4 pawn and all of his pieces are on the back rank and what's even worse the king is still stuck on e8 and it's uh, not defended at all and it's pretty pretty hard to defend it anyway so i would if you asked me which side i'd like to have i would rather always have white and uh, just because it's almost impossible to defend now i'm i'm going to show you uh, a few examples a few games in the muzio gambit which i don't normally do in the opening videos because I want to show you how the games normally develop and this is going to be slightly different than the other opening videos because there's simply not that much opening theory and it's really hard to develop any opening theory because black usually doesn't survive long enough to, to enter any and uh, as black my advice would be just memorize the moves and uh, learn how to avoid the tricks and as the moves go on the, the possibility of blundering multiplies exponentially and uh, I'm not really sure which way you should go about learning that. Perhaps just putting the position on the board and trying to find as many uh, attacking moves for white as possible. And if you play this with the white pieces, then remember one thing. You never want to trade the pieces off, especially your queen or your rook. You never want to allow black a free move. Uh, a free move that's... Uh, well, is there a better way to put it? A move during which black has enough time to develop a piece or to put his king to safety. So each and every one of your move, moves has to be an attacking, aggressive move, which either gains space or develops a piece or puts additional pressure on black's position. So, okay, uh, let's see what black can do here. Now, the, the best defensive try is the move queen to f6. And uh, that basically defends the f4 pawn and... Uh, if white captures now, then black is going to exchange the queens and simply be a piece up, so you never take here. White's main move here is e5. There's a sideline, though, with d3, which I don't think is, a, is active enough. And uh, even though if you play it perfectly, you can actually get an equal game with the white pieces, despite being a piece down and uh, often win your piece back, I think d3 is too risky because it doesn't create enough attacking pressure to, to overwhelm black. And... Uh, at least in the games I analyzed, I thought that black has uh, has uh, much more chances in the D3 line. So let's go over that first. 
So d3, uh, black continues with knight c6. Uh, here you can take on f4 with the bishop, because you play d3. Bishop takes f4, d6, developing his light squared bishop, knight c3. With each move, white is bringing uh, additional forces into the attack, and that's the only way to play this position. If you play something passive, such as a3 or h3, then black is going to have enough time to defend. Bishop e6, this is the best defensive try for black. Uh, uh, in most games, black has played knight g to e7 here, which is slightly imprecise. You you really want to get rid of this bishop standing at f7. And if you manage to relieve the pressure of the bishop and the queen uh, along the f-file and along the along the a2 uh, g8 diagonal, then you are going to be fine. So bishop to e6 is definitely the best defensive try. Knight d5, now standing at c7, threatening to win... Uh, to win the rook basically and attacking the queen as well so queen to the eight uh, the best move c3 which is slightly uh, well it's slow but it's probably the most precise move because uh, any knight jump into d into d4 would significantly slow down your attack because your queen would have to move and your queen is perfect on f3 because now in any position uh, in which this bishop moves from uh, from e7 you're going to checkmate black so you really want to keep uh, keep your queen on f3 Knight e5, attacking the queen anyway, so you take that, bishop e5, d e5, and now d4, uh, queen to d6. And here, black is of course better. Black, according to the, to the engines, has minus one. Uh, but I think white's position is playable. It's not as aggressive and it's not as favorable for white as the other lines we are going to see after uh, the move e5. But the d lines are still playable, and I think that you could get enough attacking pressure on Black's position. Now, uh, this is now move 13, but from move 7 to move 13, Black has a lot of chances to go wrong, and believe it uh, that that Black is going to go wrong in, in most of the games. So d3, knight c6, bishop f4, d6, knight c3. If here Black plays knight to e7, then white is already fine and actually almost equal, despite being a piece down. So... You could uh, count on the fact that your opponent is going to make a mistake, but I would still recommend not playing uh, 7d3 after queen to f6. I would recommend the other line, which we are going to see, and that's the, uh, the move pawn to e5. Uh, this is by far the most popular way to play, and uh, this is the most aggressive way to play. And uh, since you, well, you sacrificed a knight and a pawn, so what's better than to sacrifice a bishop as well? Because, well, yeah, that's just probably as aggressive as you could get in chess. So after e5, the queen has to take. Uh, well, uh, there has been one more move, uh, which John Shaw uh, tried uh, to analyze in his own book and apparently he used the engines. I haven't read that uh, in detail, but uh, he, he says that queen to f5 uh, just doesn't justify the, the, the peace sacrifice for white. When I analyzed the move, uh, I just couldn't find how, because white here plays d4, and after knight c6, which is supposedly the best move, bishop d3, uh, queen e6, you can you can let go of the d4 pawn with knight c3, knight takes d4, queen f4, bishop c5, king h1. I just like this position with white, and uh, if you turned on the engine, this is one of the rare lines in which white is significantly better. This is almost plus two for white, even though black still has all four of his minor pieces. So... I'm not sure how to 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 use this move, queen to f5, but uh, perhaps it's playable. I just think it isn't. I think that if you if you decline the, the sacrifice on, on, on e5, you're just worse with the black pieces. So after queen to f6, pawn to e5, you can count on the fact that black is going to capture. That's the, the best move. Uh, queen e5, and now, uh, well... Now you get to choose once more. You can either play a slightly passive move, which once again I wouldn't recommend, or, or you can sacrifice your bishop, which I really like a lot. Uh, so the, the slightly passive way to play is pawn to d3, opening up your dark squared bishop, preparing to capture on f4, develop the rest of your pieces and put your rooks on e1, uh, threatening the queen and the king. But it's slightly slower. So bishop h6, defending the f4 pawn and only allowing white to capture it if he's willing to exchange the queens, which of course white isn't. Knight c3, knight e7, bishop d2, preparing to play rook a to e1, knight bc6, rook a1, queen to f5. Here, black is much better, I would say, and uh, in some positions you are going to win your f4 pawn back, uh, in some positions you are going to be able to sacrifice on f7 anyway and get, gain some initiative, but there's basically no way for white to equalize unless black blunders horribly, which once again 
is likely to happen, but far less likely than in the underline when where white sacrificed on f7 immediately. And this position I just don't like. Even though you, you have those beautiful rooks on e1 and, and f1, you have uh, a very active bishop on c4, you have a queen on f3. I just think that black is able to, to survive this and that uh, in the d3 line, 8, d3, white can't really justify uh, the, the sacrifice. So a simple continuation would be knight d5, king d8, uh, this is the best way to, de to defend the pawn, of course, uh, white is threatening knight c7, taking, uh, of course, is impossible because the knight is pinned, uh, queen e2, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is a sacrifice line with queen to e2, which I, I think should be played, there are other moves after, queen to, after king to d8, you could play... Uh, well, okay, according to the engines, queen to e2 is not even the best move. Bishop takes f4 is the best move, but I think that bishop f4 loses too much time and that this pawn actually keeps the black bishop, which is an h6, at bay and sort of locks it down behind its own pawns. So I would recommend not taking this pawn too early. And queen to e2 seemingly sacrifices uh, a piece here because, of course, the knight is attacked twice. So knight d5, bishop d5, queen d5, but you now have bishop to c3. And you are going to win your piece back. Now, this battery here on the e-file is very scary. So now bishop to g5 has to be played uh, because otherwise this is checkmate. So black has to react, save uh, his position from checkmate and sacrifice the h8 rook. So now after bishop g5, bishop h8, uh, the engines think the position is equal, uh, but I really uh, still would rather have black because after the moves such as e6 and uh, or queen e6, trying to exchange some pieces off, and then e6, bishop uh, d6, bishop d7, uh, and probably getting your rook out eventually, I think black is fine. So this d3 line uh, in which this position is the best case scenario is too risky for white, uh, and I wouldn't recommend playing that. Now let's go over the main variation and the, the most fun variation. After queen takes c5, uh, the proper Muzio gambit, which is the romantic way to play, which is how the game was played, how the opening was played uh, in the Renaissance when the opening was invented, is bishop takes f7. Uh, yeah, and I forgot to mention, uh, the Muzio gambit is also known as the Polerio gambit, uh, named after a Renaissance chess player from the 16th century, Giulio Cesare Polerio, and it was wrongly attributed to Muzio, another Italian, Muzio d'Alessandro, another Italian player from the from the 17th century by an English chess writer. So it should really be called the Polerio Gambit, but whatever. Uh, bishop takes f7, sacrificing the bishop. Once again, uh, black has nothing better than to accept the, the gambit, the, the sacrifice. So king takes f7. And now the point of the sacrifice. You want to put as much pressure on black as possible. Uh, uh, by this point, you've sacrificed a pawn, a bishop, and a knight, which is, of course, an insurmountable uh, material advantage for, for black. If white slows down, if white allows the black king to go into safety, if white allows black even to develop a few of his pieces, black is going to be much better. So now you have to play aggressively. You can beat another pawn, d4, chasing the queen away from the defense. Uh, queen takes d4, the only move. Bishop to e3. Uh, the bishop isn't hanging, of course, the pawn is pinned to the king. Queen f6 is the best defense. Uh, queen to g7 has been tried, but I think that queen to f6 is the best move. And I think that queen to f6 should be played in every position. And now, uh, the main move here is bishop takes f4, uh, taking the pawn and trying to get some active checks uh, here and trying to develop the rest of your pieces. I have, however, found the move here which sort of uh, reduces uh, white's attacking pressure too much. Uh, and I think that... Uh, the attacking pressure won't last long after this move, and that's the move bishop to c5 check. You're basically develop, uh, developing the bishop with tempo and provoking uh, provoking white into a queen into a queen exchange after bishop to e3. So I think this sort of, uh, well, reduces the pressure too much. The main move here uh, is, king, is knight to e7, and that's the most often played move. But after knight to e7, white does have a lot of pressure, and let's say knight c3, d6, bishop to e5, I already like white here, queen takes f3, rook takes f3, king to g8, you are going to have to give up one piece because the bishop and the rook are hanging, so bishop h8, uh, knight to d7, bishop d4, let's say. Here, black is better, but white is fine, and after bishop takes f4, bishop to c5, check. Uh, you, you can move your king to h1, but bishop to e3 is much more precise. And uh, if, you, if you move your king, then this is already too much. This is 
uh, minus eight, so this really can't be defended. So after, uh, yeah, after bishop c5 check, bishop to e3, you're allowing this trade, queen f3, rook f3, king e8, bishop c5, you're winning the bishop, but still, that's that's a common principle in, in the middle game when your material up and your position is worse, you can give back a portion of that material to, to equalize, and this is exactly what black is doing. Black has given up his bishop, uh, he was already two pieces up, so it doesn't really matter, but by giving his bishop up, he's reducing white's pressure and white doesn't really have anything anymore. Okay, the king is still ridiculous on on, uh, on e8, but black can easily defend, and this just means that uh, white's position is busted. So, uh, I'm not really sure what to say about the opening, because I already found a sort of winning idea for black on move 11, which... Uh, kills off all the pressure, but you have to know how to get to that point, and uh, now let's go over a few examples. This is the game uh, Alexei Shirov uh, versus Lapinski uh, from 1990, uh, and uh, in this game, this game is a clear example of how dangerous the opening is. Uh, you can see the evaluation bar on the right side of the board, so e4, e5, uh, f4, the king's gambit, e4, knight f3, g5, bishop c4, g4, castles, the Muzio gambit, uh, g takes f3, queen takes f3, uh, uh, Lapinski did play queen f6, e5 was played, of course, Alexei Shirov is one of the most aggressive players in history, so uh, what else would he play? Queen e5, uh, of course, Shirov went for bishop takes f7, uh, the position is minus 2 for black, uh, I hope you can you can see that, but uh, I would rather have white, king takes f7, d4, this is exactly what we were just looking at, the main line of the Muzio gambit, queen d4, bishop e3, queen f6, and here, after uh, bishop takes f4, uh, Lapinski went terribly wrong. Here I just showed shown you the, the move bishop to c5 check, which is the best move in my opinion. Knight to knight here is also playable, uh, d6 is also playable, but Lapinski played king to e8. And uh, if you can see the evaluation going uh, from one side to the other after the bishop takes the four king e8, white is already better. So this is what it takes for white to, to regain... Uh, uh, to, to to get the advantage in the position, you're, you're a piece down, you're two pieces down, and one wrong move, such as king to e8, which looks almost natural, is enough to give you the advantage. And here, Shiro was quick to punish that, and this is now move 11 on move 17, Lapinski designed. Uh, knight c3, bring another piece into the attack, not hurrying with... I mean, you have three pieces uh, active in this position, you wouldn't want to check with those three. If you can get another piece or two into, into the position, that's basically what you want to do after you sacrifice some material. And... If you look at Black's back row, Black still has six pieces, all six pieces, but neither of them are active, neither of them are developed, he's only playing with the queen. So I would argue that even though white is, uh, in theory, two pieces down, in practice, white is three pieces up. And if you look at the board, if you count the material which is active and in play, then white is simply better. Uh, knight c6, developing a piece, knight to d5, threatening knight c7, and threatening all sorts of scary things, queen to g6 which is a mistake, this is now almost plus one. Uh, here should have played rook a1, which is not the most precise move, but after bishop to e7, this is just losing. And once again, one simple move is enough to, to, to make your position completely losing and unbearable. Here, uh, Shirov did punish it the best possible way. Uh, bishop to d6, a wonderful, uh, a wonderful move. And here, what does black do? You, you can pause the video if you want, this is a very Nice finish. Uh, black played king to d8. Uh, after king to d8, this is just checkmate. Queen f8, check. Uh, bishop takes f8. Uh, bishop to c7, checkmate. And another move after rook a2, um, rook a2, e1, I'm sorry. Bishop to e7, bishop to d6. Another try was knight to f6, which is supposedly the best move, but yeah. This is now still busted after bishop takes e7, knight takes e7, knight takes e7, queen f7, uh, the best defense is knight g6, check, king d8, uh, let's say knight here, and the position is just going to be lost. You can see that this is now just busted. So knight to f6 was the best try, but regardless, the, the position was losing. After bishop d6, king to d8, this just allowed a beautiful checkmate. Another move I was looking at is what would happen if what would happen if black simply captures uh, the bishop here, then 
it's a simple mate in one you can see it because the bishop is uh, the bishop is pinned so that was one example uh, another game i wanted to show you this this was played between hikaru nakamura and dimitri andreikin so slightly higher rated uh, players nakamura is of course 2700 and uh, andreikin is no fool himself he's 2683 uh, the game was played in 2010 so e4 e5 f4 e4 knight f3 g5 uh, bishop c4 g4 the Muzio Gambit gf3, queen takes f3, and here uh, Andrejkin didn't play queen to f6, which is the best move. He played bishop h6, probably trying to surprise Nakamura because he knows that Nakamura is an aggressive player and that he probably knows his lines in the Muzio. So the game went on with d4, and by the way, bishop to h6 is a bad move. You shouldn't play that. That's why I didn't uh, include it in my analysis. d4, queen h4, uh, trying to be aggressive himself, but yeah, this is just better for white. Of course the evaluation will go up and down, but I just wanted to show you how the games can turn out. And uh, yeah, uh, Nakamura was quick to, to punish this and, and won, yeah, won brilliantly. So if you want to play the Muzio Gambit uh, with the white pieces, I would suggest that you prepare uh, nerves of steel and uh, that you Remain calm during the game. Uh, it's essential that you keep the pressure up, that you don't allow Black a single move during which he can relax, get his king to safety or develop. And if you release the uh, release the pressure, then Black is going to win. If you manage to keep the pressure up, then I would say chances of you win winning are 90 or 95 percent, especially against players lower than 22, 2300. And in these two examples, uh, the players were both grandmasters. So. It's really hard to defend. Okay, let's go over the lines just one more time. So e4, e5, f4, the king's gambit, e4 accepted, knight f3, king's knight gambit, g5, the main line, uh, or the classical, bishop to c4, white doesn't go for h4, which is the main and the best move, g4 castles, giving up the knight, black has to take, gf3, queen f3, queen f6, the best defense, if you play this with the black pieces, never play bishop to h6 or something else, queen e7 has also been tried, but queen f6 is better, e5, you can also play d3, which is slightly more passive, I would recommend d5, e5, queen takes e5, with black you have to take, um, once again, uh, the move queen to f5 has been mentioned, but I wouldn't recommend it, it's too risky, queen f5, and now, once again, you can choose between d3, which is a slightly slower move, or bishop takes f7, uh, the best the best way to play this, sacrificing your second piece, and this is sort of the starting position here after d4, queen takes d4, bishop e3, queen f6, uh, and bishop takes f4, this is the starting position of the Muzio Gambit, uh, minus three for black, uh, horribly weak position for white, but if black misplays it, you're going to win, and uh, if you play e5 with the black pieces, if you encounter the, the Muzio Gambit, I would suggest uh, getting into this exact position and then playing the move bishop c5 check. I really couldn't find a good way for white to respond to this apart from bishop to e3. And after the queen exchange, I just don't see uh, white play in this position. I just can't see a way for, for white to checkmate black. Uh, okay, uh, thanks very much for watching everybody. I hope you got something from this video on the Muzio Gambit and uh, stay tuned for more chess. Let me know what you think about the video. Bye-bye.